Hi, welcome to Point Power. My name is Matt, and uh, today we are doing a continuation of the um, four strokes cylinder head. Uh, just show you the basics, la da da. And um, if you have a four stroke head, um, to remove the valves and the valve springs, the keepers, etc., is pretty much the same um, process, literally for nearly every single one. There are a few others. Um, which we won't go through because um, brakes and strand engines etc etc there's other ways you can do stuff um, but this is kind of like the accepted um, way that um, valves are removed so what you need to do is you have a cylinder head you have a valve and you can see like I said this valve's nicely stuck in there and we're going to take we'll take that out because that's for example we're going to take out the um, inlet valve won't bother, we'll only just do one. But basically what you need is you need a valve spring compression tool. Which, um, to be quite honest, aren't really that expensive. There are loads of different types. There's one where it just clamps onto the spring there and yet, and I don't like them ones. Uh, these are your best bet. If you have um, a massive G-clamp and a socket that you don't mind sacrificing, you can kind of do this arrangement and build one yourself. Um, there are a few problems with this one, um, things that I don't like, like this head, the uh, pressure from this um, thread. Number one is the thread is a V-thread, which is bad, should be an Atme thread. Uh, number two is this um, foot pad, as soon as pressure is applied to it, there's no washers or anything in here, so what happens is, is this tends to spin and mark your uh, valve as well as when you actually turn this in. So basically <coughs> it has a um, dual action pivot um, so that this can clamp down. It's quite a cool bit of kit. Um, I'll show you how to use it after I have a bit of my coffee. So there's two ends. There's this end with the recesses. This is a bit flimsy. I don't like this. Like I said I'll probably build my own one of these. Um, but I have been using this for a long time. I've had a three or four of these, one or two different kind of designs. But basically this um, one with the ring and the passage here goes uh, where the spring, the spring end, and this sits against your valve seat. So basically what you do is, and it's a bit fiddly, but you've got to find your valve seat and then slowly close this arm up so it starts to clamp down and make sure it makes contact with the valve face and the top of your retainer. Then what you want to do is you want to tighten this little vice type handle um, and try and get it seated as well as you can. I say it's a bit fiddly. If you go on to um, Jeffro Mobile he's made his own um, valve compression tool um, with a basically what looks like a, a nylon chopping board which is absolutely excellent and uh, I think that um, in the near future I'm going to uh, pinch that idea if he doesn't mind and uh, use it myself because it is, uh, it's kind of a bit of this setup but it's just a plunger and it's really quick and there's none of this messing about. So um, basically what this is doing is this, this is keeping the valve still so the valve doesn't pop out so it's clamping the valve between here and here on this side it's touching the uh, spring retainer and on this side it's touching the valve so it should compress the spring when we compress the spring you'll see the keepers or the uh, collets or retainers um, kind of leaf out and then you can grab them use the best thing is the magnet I'm not too bothered about losing them so I'm not going to use a magnet but you get the idea um, so all you do is you tighten this up I'll try and get you in here so you can see. Right then, so I'll arrange this so I can do it and so you can see. I'll just move my stool a bit so I get a bit of a better access. But I don't want to stand up because that'll be in the way of the shot. So as you can see, this this ring, that's bad, this ring is clamped against the uh, spring retainer and the valve and the collets are sat in the middle. So as you tighten this up, you can see this is why it should be an Acme thread and not a V thread because you can feel it binding. It's slowly compressing the spring down. And that's easily enough. And if you get a pick tool or a, 
a pick tool and a magnet. You can just grab these collets, retainers. Now, there's one. Where are we? There's one. And the other one, sometimes they might be popping off, like so, and drop on the floor. Um, sometimes you might not have gone deep enough. And usually when I install these, I put a dab of grease on the inside of the collet, so when I'm actually installing them, um, we can... Uh, <coughs> so they'll stick, so they'll stay in place. So then all you do is you unwind your uh, compressor. Now I like to wind it off a bit and then use this pivot arm. Sometimes everything flies everywhere. So you've got to be a bit delicate. And then there you have it. There's the return and spring. Seats in the bottom. We won't pick that out. And our valve is removable. So that's how you get to your valves. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you um, how to install, which is basically the other way around. But there's one or two little pointers that you can use, um, which I've briefly described. So what you want to do is get yourself a pot of grease. Open it up so it's ready. And then make sure your valve seat, not only is your valve seat in there, but it's actually not tilted or fallen because you'll crush it and you'll just destroy everything. So then we put our valve spring, and I like to set the retainer off so I can see the valve seat. Um, nearly all, well actually let's just say all just for the heck of it, nearly every single one or every single one, the valves are angled to like 21 degrees or 15 degrees or whatever it is for that particular engine. So everything doesn't want to, even when you've got this face down, um, nothing wants to sit quite right, which is just something you have to contend with. Then we stick the retainer on, and then this is the fiddly bit. You've got to get your uh, compression tool out again. I'll have to stand up because I can't see. And uh, make sure that you're hitting the valve properly and the uh, hitting the valve central, the center, center in the valve, and making sure you're getting a good purchase on the um, spring retainer and then wind it in if you need a little more access now, now you've done that get yourself a uh, collet or um, keeper as the Americans say and then I'm using a pair of pliers, it's so much easier with a pair of pliers. Um, a pair of tweezers. And you need to seat it on. Now remember, <coughs> they have a, an orientation, so make sure the taper, the wider section, the uh, fatter end is to the top, to the top of the valve. Um, a little bit of grease. And all I'm doing is, is I'm just coating there just a tiny bit of grease just to make it stick. This will all be washed away and all the rest of it when the engine starts running. Get your other one. And uh, pop that on. Now there's something very important, which I'll, I'll just put this on and then I'll explain. And then, what you want to do is, when you're installing valve springs, you want to wind back the tool, you don't want to just let go of that lever. If you let go of that lever and the tapers aren't sitting right, the spring, spring's going to go pop, the spring's going to come flying towards you and the keepers are going to go everywhere. And if you don't have a large stock of keepers, um, you're going to be searching for them all week. Now, something that is very important is that the keepers, and I'll get a pen for this. Just bear with me. I've got my pen, now I'm back. <coughs> I've done a little drawing here, because my artistic skills are excellent. And um, so basically this is the tip of the valve, and this is your keepers, like this. 
they'll have a tendency to want to sit like this sometimes and this is bad you don't want this this is um, unevenly distributed pressure um, against the valve it snaps tips um, it can wear your retainer in a weird and funny way this is the right way so you want an even gap between the two and there'll always be a gap if you don't have a gap and these two are touching then you've got the wrong retainers so you've got the wrong um, oh bloody hell it's completely gone you've got the wrong keepers or collets you've got the completely the wrong ones if these two are touching they shouldn't touch there should be clearance everything expands with heat landed down and you don't want these time to crush the valve because they'll pop the head off um, so like I said they have a tendency I'll zoom you back in oh, not zoom I will get used to this one day so we've got now here we've got super zoom there we go there's super zoom so what we have here now is that we have a smaller there and a larger there so what we need to do is while we've still got the retainer in place you can oops and I've overdone it push them like so and it's a bit hard sometimes because there's grease in the way that you've put on now you can't jam anything in there to space them apart because then that'll be trapped inside and become part of the valve train which is not what you want so as you can see there we're about 50-50 and they may move on you right now as soon as you can see it come up and as soon as you can see it take you can see that it's I think it'd be very hard for me to move yeah one of these keepers now we're all good now you can release your arm because nothing's going to pop see nothing really move and um, and then there you have it so that's nicely snug in position and uh, we'll just remove some of the excess grease and all the rest of it and uh, so there you go, you've got a nice I'll get something to clean this out of I'm completely sat in the wrong position this is usually where I weld so there's usually nothing cloth like flammable or anything um, in sight so what I'll do is we'll clean them keepers up a bit so you can see it's quite a good view actually no. There we go. Get a lot of light in there as well. So now you can see that we've got a nice even distributed gap. I've still got some crap in it, but we'll, it'll live. And uh, like I say, it's just the reverse. It's just that with the retainers or the keepers, you've got to be, uh, you've got to pay attention and make sure that they're um, locked in. If they aren't, don't try and do it like this. There is so much pressure, and you might actually pop a tip on your valve. Um, this is a weak point in the valve and they do go and pop off um, so yeah so that's uh, um, removing valves and valve springs and retainers and etc and uh, like I said there'll be some more videos coming up on cams tappets measuring tappets shims seats different kind of um, like umbrella seals and oil splash seals etc and uh, and then we'll move on to um, we'll move on to combustion chambers at some point. Um, the different types: pent roof, um, bathtub, flatheads, etc. So um, watch the videos, etc. And uh, any um, comments or questions or anything, stick them below. And um, I'll see you in a bit.